Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge, and today we have Xenon, the sequel. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, hey, if, why bother coming up with a name? Just spell it wrong. Because it's cute. It's alliterative, you know? Stanley can do it, everybody else can. Uh, Xenon is obviously the sequel to second out of apparently, I think, three um, Xenon movies. At least, I think the next one is Z3, um, from what I saw on the list. Um, she's a teenage girl. She's 15. She lives in a space station orbiting Earth. Uh, this is sort of like not-so-deep Space Nine. <laughs> and and uh, it's where she lives uh, with her parents. And apparently, due to the things that she did in the last movie, the, the, the first in the series... Uh, she's like the hero of the space station. She has all access to everything. There might have been a boy involved in the last one who doesn't show up in this one because towards the very beginning of the thing, he literally breaks up with her, like her looking at an iPad, future iPad, before iPads were even created. This is from 2001, by the way. 2001. It's an hour and a half long. Looking at, and they call them pads. I mean, it's not like pad is a new term. Star Trek had been using it for since 1987. Um, or not even further if the original series ever used the term. I'm not sure. Anyway, but yeah, this is very much a teenage girl's Star Trek for teenage girls, which uh, Star Trek's for everybody, okay? I'm going to be right out there. Star Trek's for everybody. There's something to be good to be found in Star Trek, uh, especially Deep Space Nine. But that's not what, we're talk not what we're talking about here. But this is a very... Imagine a teenage girl was the focus of Deep Space Nine. Her and her friend, who was played by Raven Simone in the last film, from what I understand, and possibly in the third film, her name, her friend's name is Nebula. They get into sort some sort of trouble, which really only gets <sighs> Xenon in trouble, and uh, <laughs> which you have to see to believe they mess with an airlock and really mess up the the guy who's running the place. Uh, by the way, played by, well, let me get get his name right here, Stuart Pankin. Stuart Pankin, for me, is the only actor I recognize in here. Maybe the general, uh, played by John Getz, uh, General Hammond. Uh, both of them are perennial character actors who, who have been in everything. Everything for the last 40 years. Usually playing dads or authority figures or um, villains or... You know, whatever it is, it's whatever uh, whatever a, a white male uh, needs to needs a role, they usually fill it, and uh, it's they're reliable. That's why they keep getting work. I, I'm guessing because uh, they do a good job. Uh, but everybody else, I don't, know, I, don't know, I, I honestly don't recognize anybody. Uh, if, if, uh, Raven Simone had been in this one, she would have been the most famous person in it. And possibly the reason why she, she was famous enough maybe to, to not be in it at the time. I don't know. I have no idea, but she, apparently she came back for the third one. We'll find out eventually because, you know, at some point we're going to get randomly get one of these movies picked. So anyway, um, she gets sent down to alien life monitoring, uh, with this dorky, neurotic uh, guy um, her age. Figure she's single now, that this would, ha this would uh, lead to something. It does not through the course of the film. Sort of. You know what? You're not going to watch it anyway. They literally wait until the last two minutes of the film for him to put on a suit and comb his hair, and then suddenly she's like, oh, like, without saying it, but looking at him and going, hmm, he's cute. So, yeah, there's no development toward that. Just change your hair, change your outfit, and suddenly you're attractive. Laying the seeds for whatever. Who knows? Uh, we'll find out when Z3 is eventually watched. Uh, but <laughs> the adventure here comes as she's monitoring aliens. She gets this little signal, and she thinks it's, uh, she thinks it's coming from aliens. And nobody believes her. Meanwhile, the space station is being overtaken by military who are tearing it apart because it's falling out of orbit or something. And again, it's, it's reads like a drama. It is not a comedy, even though there's 
funny bits throughout, um, character bits that were, are meant to be funny, uh, things where they just, in order to just, I guess, spread out the time and make characters more interesting, like her mom, well, at some point, Xenon escapes to Earth um, on a mission to save the space station, the space day. Yes, the space day. That's what she calls it. Um, oh, what's her? What's the other phrase that she uses? It's it, it's in here. Oh God, it's yeah, it's anyway. Cetus Lapidus, something like that. Cetus Lapidus. I think that's her catchphrase. Like it's said a lot, and I'm going to, if I remember it, I'm going to end up saying it randomly throughout. The rest of the week for some reason and nobody will understand what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, yeah, she is, is sent on a mission to basically, she sneaks away off to Earth and she brings along, well, she doesn't bring along, she doesn't intend to bring along the girl standing next to her, which is the general's daughter or the whatever the, yeah, the general's daughter who she has to sort of take care of and wait on hand and foot for some reason. And she's really snotty and she's a jerk about everything and threatens to socially destroy her and her family and make them lose their jobs if she disobeys her. Whatever. It becomes then a buddy adventure movie, on the run kind of movie, and they are hunting down a rock star who was apparently in the last one maybe also, but the signals she's getting sound like his music, so they have to hunt down this obviously older, handsome British rock star who's hiding away on apparently Hawaii, even though they don't say it, it, it looks like an excuse to have Disney actors go to Hawaii. I, I, I'm guessing they have property there. You think? Anyway, they, uh, they go on the adventure, they learn about life and family, and mom is sent after them to, to pick them up and take them somewhere, but she's, because she's the only one who's a real pilot, uh, who's on their side, but yet she's super crazy nervous about flying. Like, she's never taken a lesson before, it seems like it. Where, I imagine, if you're a space pilot, there's a lot of rigorous testing, and there's no such thing as going back to, I don't know how to do this, and freaking out and trying to land a ship with your eyes closed as you're coming in on re-entry. Again, it was meant to make it, all the more exciting and interesting and a challenge to overcome rather than just, oh, look, hey, we're just going to fly a garbage scout down to Hawaii, pick up the kids, and then take them into space to meet aliens. Or is it aliens? So, yeah, apparently... <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to... No, no. You're going to have to watch it yourself. If you haven't already, like I told you yesterday, you're going to watch Xenon, the sequel, to find out where everything goes. And to be honest, it doesn't seem to have any level of urgency. It 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 reads out in his pace like a, an afternoon soap opera. Um, and you think, okay, first of all, it's directed by Manny Cotto, which so many people would know him from Star Trek Enterprise, or 24, or Dexter, stuff that is looks completely different from this, but uh, it's not like he's an unskilled director or anything else, but it's not like he has control of everything, but still, it's it's not, there's, there's no, there's no real crazy urgency. You know it's point A to point B to point C to point D resolution, and it's, it ha that's the way it happens. And the actors are not bad. They're, they, you know, they get the job done. They go to the places they need to go. And that's it. And the thing is resolved. And then there's just way too many, like, again, she's, she. no matter what, I'm not going to tell you how or why, if you care, uh, but Xenon is the hero. Like, everything is attributed to her efforts, even though so many other people were involved 15-year-old girl gets all the credit. Again, the movie's about her. It's her sequel. So, it's, fun. it's to be expected. It's not like anybody's going to be like, Hey, Iron Man. 
Everybody saved the day. No, Tony Stark's getting the credit. It's just the way it is, you know. Anyway, but hey, that's Xenon the sequel for you. We learned a little bit. We laughed a little bit. And uh, someday we'll watch the first one and the third one. It's not made for me. It's honestly not made for me. Uh, so I can't really say that it's it's bad. But if you got a teenage kid or a young younger than teenage kid who likes uh, maybe this space adventure with uh, teenage girls, this is for you. This is absolutely for you. It's just not for me. Nothing against the people who made it or anything, but it's just not for me. Sorry, Disney. All right, let's pick tomorrow's. One for one. Mm -hmm. One for one. Come on. Oh, scroll, scroll, scroll. I really should make this smaller, make it go faster. Uh, hey, there we go. One for one. We have not had this. We had one forty, uh, but we have not had one for one. This is uh, something a little bit different. We're not having a movie. Uh, this is a documentary. This is more than likely a Nat Geo. Uh, so 141 is Drain the Oceans. Drain the Oceans. That doesn't seem like good advice. That doesn't seem very environmental. But I have a feeling that maybe it's about what would happen if you did drain the oceans and what you'd find. Who knows? That's my guess. Let's, uh, let's watch and find out. That's what it's here for. It's on Disney+. Plus. Uh, we'll talk about it tomorrow, then, on uh, Disney+. Plus. Everyday Challenge. See you then.